started the 2017 FMA, and I intend to finish it, okay? You thought I didn't have any resolve? Well, too bad. We're gonna do it. We're gonna finish it. Hello, everybody. I'm Prar, and today we're gonna be continuing where we left off on the 2017 F equals MA. It's gonna be very, very fun. Not just fun, super, super, super fun. Physics is like the best subject ever, okay? Okay, fine, fine. You guys don't wanna hear me talk nonsense. We're gonna get started right away. Alrighty, number 14. So it starts by giving us following information in one sentence. Quite epic, dang. An object starting from rest can roll without s Bruh! <laughs> okay, this is very useful information. 14. What are the following four objects, each with mass m and radius r, would have the largest acceleration down the incline? What are the following- Oh, okay, I see, I see. So you have a uniform solid sphere, you have a uniform solid disk, you have a, a hollow solid, uh, spherical shell, a hoop, and all of them are the same. So, the first thing to consider when you consider rolling without slipping is their moment of inertia. So let's first determine the acceleration of this guy who's rolling down an incline. So we got our body, it looks something like that. And then we know that on our body we have two forces, or three forces, but only two are very important. We have our uh, weight, we have our friction force as well. So if we consider the um, torque around the center, like around this point, the only thing that contributes torque is the friction force F. So we know that F times R is equal to I alpha. And similarly, if we just consider our like horizontal velocity like down the ramp, we could just split up into two components. So we have our mg cosine theta as a vertical component, and then the component that's parallel to the ramp is just mg sine theta. So we know that in the direction of the ramp, the two forces that we have are mg sine theta and f. So we could just write that mg sine theta minus f is equal to ma. We also know that alpha is equal to a over r. So if we combine everything, we first get from our first equation that f is equal to i a over r squared. And then if we plug that in here, we get that a is equal to mg sine theta over m plus i, l, I over r squared. Okay. So basically we know that if all of them have the same mass, the same radius, same everything, the only thing that's different is their i. So, as we increase i, right, our acceleration decreases because it's in the denominator. But as we decrease i, our acceleration increases. So basically if we want the largest acceleration, we gotta take the one with the lowest i. So we know that a uniform solid sphere is just 2 uh, fifths mr squared. We know that a uniform solid disk is just uh, 1 half mr squared. A spherical shell is 2 thirds mr squared. And a hoop is just mr squared. So which one has the least? That's right, the uniform sphere. Very good. So our answer would just be A. Moving on. 15. Which of the following four objects, each a uniform solid sphere released from rest, would have the largest speed after the center of mass has moved through a vertical distance h? Alright, so it's giving us distance, and we want to find, like, the maximum speed. So this, like, kind of lends itself to a conservation of energy kind of thing. So basically we know that mgh, which is the change in potential energy, is equal to the final energy, which is our kinetic and rotational kinetic energy. So it's uh, normal kinetic energy is just 1 half mv squared, right? However, it's rotational kinetic energy is 1 half iw squared. And we know that i for a sphere is 2 fifths mr squared. So we can replace that. And we also know that omega is equal to v over r. So if we plug everything in, we get mgh is equal to 1 half mv squared plus 1 half times 2 fifths mr squared times v over r squared. And now if we combine everything, we get that mgh is equal to 7 tenths mv squared. Pretty epic. Now we gotta solve for the maximum v. So we can see that we can cancel out m, and clearly v doesn't depend on m or r, so it doesn't even matter. This is such a troll question. I wonder if they got a troll like this. Disappointed. So I guess the answer is just E. Pretty epic. Alrighty, number 16, let's do this. A rod moves freely between the horizontal floor and a slanted wall when the end is in contact with the floor is moving at V. What is the speed of the other end in contact with the wall? Or the end in contact with the wall. Okay, so the floor and the wall. Okay, we're good. So basically we just gotta draw our diagram. Theta. Alpha. Let's say this is X and this is Y over here. Let me draw the diagram meter. This is um. Alrighty, so right now we have three variables that are changing, right? X is changing, Y is changing, and theta is changing. But how can we make it so that only one of the variables is changing and we can find everything else in terms of that one variable? We use theta. So let's first find Y in terms of theta. So we know that this over here is L sine theta. So since Y sine alpha is equal to L sine theta, we know that Y is equal to L sine theta over sine alpha. 
We also know that this whole length over here is equal to L cosine theta, right? And then we know that this over here, this length over here, is equal to L sine theta over tan alpha. Alright, so then we basically have x now. Okay, I'm trying to think of a way to do it without calc, but I really can't think of any way to do this without calc. So we're just gonna have to use calc, unfortunate. So basically the way you use calc is you basically take the derivative of both sides. So I guess that learning calc is like pretty useful for asthma. You learn, like, you can get some obscure questions like this. So basically if we take the derivative, we get that dy over dt is equal to uh, L cosine theta over sine alpha, d theta over dt. And then similarly for the bottom one, we get dx over dt is equal to L times negative sine theta minus cosine theta over tan alpha, d theta over dt. And then if we just cancel out the d theta and the dt, and we know that dx over dt is v, we basically get that vy over v is equal to what? Let's first simplify the bottom thing. Let's first simplify dx over dt. So this whole thing becomes negative sine theta sine alpha minus cosine theta cosine alpha all over sine alpha. So the top basically simplifies to negative cosine theta plus alpha, or theta minus alpha actually, and that all over sine alpha. Now if we take the first equation over the second equation, so we know dx over dt is just v and the dt, d theta over dt will cancel out, we get vy over v is equal to cosine theta over negative cosine of theta minus alpha, and the problem Whoops, not, wait, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then we know that the negative doesn't matter because we're looking for speed. And we know that cosine's an even function, so it's the same thing as d. So d is basically our answer, very evident. Okay, I really feel like there should be a way to do it without calculus because FMA, like, should not require calculus. But this one is super, super, super straightforward if you know calculus. So I just recommend you, like, learn basic implicit differentiation. So just search that up if you don't know what it is, but... But once you know that, it's like a lot easier to do this kind of problem. It's also called related rates if you guys want to search that up. Also, learn your trig, because if you don't know how to do trig manipulations, you're going to be done for. This question by itself literally depended only on trig. So if you got to learn any math, like before you take the ACMA, just make sure you know trig well. Alright, I gotta rid myself of that trig stench. We're going to move on to number 17, which does not look like it needs trig, so epic. An object is thrown directly downward from the top of a 180 meter tall building. Epic. It takes one second for the object to fall the last 60 meters. What was the initial downward speed of the object, basically? Okay, so we know that v0 t plus 1 half g t squared is equal to 60. So that means we can literally just solve for v0 real quick. So we know that v0 times 1 plus 1 half times 10, and we know that t is 1 again, is equal to 60. So v0 is equal to 55. All right, and we know that before it gets to the last uh, 60 meters, it's fallen 120 meters already. So we can write another equation, which basically says vf squared minus v squared is equal to 2gd. So in this case, v is the speed at which it's thrown at the very top, and vf is what it is at the last 60 meters. So our v0 that we calculated just now, we want that to be our vf. So we basically say that 55 squared minus v squared is equal to 2g times 120. And if we just plug this into our calculator, we should get the right answer. Let us do that. Oh, very nice. That's a nice number. It's 25. Cool. So we just get the v is equal to 25. Damn. Answer is v. Okay, I think that we could do one more question. Okay, let's do this last one and then we're good. Alright, so we basically have a uniform disc being pulled by a force F through a string attached to its center of mass. Assume that the uh, disc is rolling smoothly without slipping at a, in a certain instant of time. Which region of the disc is moving with zero total acceleration? So let's just draw it. So we basically have this circle thing. And we know that all like the particles are like accelerating downwards or like this way or this way around the uh, center. And they're accelerating because the whole thing is accelerating and spinning faster and faster and faster. But the whole thing, like the whole disc, is moving this way. But they don't really have tangential acceleration too, right? They also have like towards the center. So basically, that you have like a this way uh, acceleration, you have a this way acceleration, you have a this way acceleration, you have a this way acceleration. But you also have to add in this arrow because every single point is moving at the same acceleration of the center of mass except they have these additional arrows. So we add this arrow to all of them and the only one that looks like it could possibly cancel out is this one. So the answer is just D, region 4, very cool. 
Actually, I think we can do one more. 19 looks not too bad. So it says that a puck is kicked up a ramp, which makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. The graph below depicts the speed of the puck. Okay, so speed, not velocity. Where is the time? What is the coefficient of friction between the puck and the ramp? So basically, it's like this, right? 30 degrees, and the velocity is going up, and then it goes back down. So that's where I'm assuming where the like little pivot point is when it starts moving down. So basically, when it's going up, you have three forces. You have mg, you have your normal force, and you have your frictional force, which is preventing it from going up. So you know that your Fn is equal to mg cosine theta. We know that this component over here is equal to mg sine theta, and we know that F is equal to Fn mu. So if we want to find our acceleration, all we have to do is add these two and divide by m, because F equals ma. So we basically want to find the ratio of these two accelerations. So this one has a slope of negative two, this one has a slope of two-thirds. So the ratio of the accelerations is two-thirds over two, which is equal to one-third. So basically we want the acceleration after it starts moving down to be one-third of its acceleration while it's moving up. So its acceleration up is mg sine theta plus mg cosine theta mu over m which is equal to g times sine theta plus cosine theta mu. All right, now we want to find it on the way down, which is exactly the same except this friction force is going the opposite direction. So it's basically the same thing except this thing gets flipped to a minus sign. So we have g times sine theta minus cosine theta mu. And we want to satisfy our um, condition. So we'll just write that over here. One third g sine theta cosine plus cosine theta mu is equal to g times sine theta plus minus cosine theta mu. So then theta is equal to 30 degrees, we can plug into our equation and we get what? 1 third times 1 half plus root 3 over 2 mu is equal to 1 half minus root 3 over 2 mu. And if we just quickly solve this epic equation, we get what? We get 2 root 3 over 3 mu is equal to 1 third and then mu is equal to one over two root three, which is approximately what calculator tell me? What, it doesn't want to tell me? Bro. All right, 0.29, that should be an answer. Okay, pretty epic, 19 is D. Okay, let's check our answers, go, go, go. All right, 14A, 15E, 16D, 17B, 18D, 19D. Very nice, perfect, four, four, bruh. At the very end, it couldn't even count. Okay, five for five. That's how you count. One plus one plus one plus one plus one is equal to five. All right, that's all I got. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching so much. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you want more of these kind of things, let me know down in the comments. And other than that, that's all I got. Thank you guys for watching so much again, and see you guys next time.